My name is Jennifer Williams. Today I will be presenting the paper Learning Disentangled Phone and Speaker Representations in a Semi-Supervised VQVE Paradigm. I am a student at the University of Edinburgh, and this is joint work with the National Institute of Informatics in Tokyo, Japan. Here's a brief outline of the talk. I'll talk about the motivation, the related work, the VQVAE variants that we experimented with, the evaluation, and conclusion in future work. So to begin, we know that multiple informational factors are contained in the speech signal. For example, when I play this sample, ask her to bring these things with her from the store. This bit of speech has a lot of different information in that signal. For example, likability, noise, native accent, content, speaker identity, gender, style, intelligibility, among others. We know that traditional representations of speaker identity contain this extra information. Different kinds of representations are useful for different kinds of speech tasks. Furthermore, there are no end-to-end -end solutions that effectively factorize this information while also retaining the information and not just discarding or removing it from the representations. Next, for related work. So in speaker representations, uh, traditionally we use X vectors or I vectors. Recently in uh, 2019 and 2020, it has been shown that the X vector contains information such as the session ID, gender, speaking rate, transcription, the words, the phonemes, the utterance uh, length, and the augmentation type of noise. Other recent work has shown that some of this information, such as speaker style and speaker identity, can be disentangled. However, that approach was not end-to-end, -end, and while it worked for style, it did not work for speaker identity. It relies on labeled data, and the only way to evaluate that kind of disentanglement is through an ad hoc classification task. So the original VQVAE uh, works with a single phone encoder, and we use a neural vocoder such as wave RNN to synthesize speech from the discrete VQ codes. In this example, the input is a waveform, and the output is also a waveform. Therefore, it is an autoencoder paradigm. And the intermediary representations are a subphone space based on a phone encoder and a phone vector quantization codebook. This approach is self-supervised. It learns the content subphones from the waveform. It uses wave RNN vocoder. However, this approach cannot generalize to unseen speakers who are not seen in training, and it does not create any type of representation of the speaker. Our adaptation of the original VQVAE is to stack multiple encoders to learn the different representations. In this example, we continue with an autoencoder paradigm where we have input waveform speech and the output is the synthesized waveform. We also use, again, the wave RNN vocoder as a decoder. However, in the intermediary representation space, we have stacked a phone encoder with a speaker encoder. The phone encoder remains exactly the same and it conditions the wave RNN vocoder using local conditioning. What we've added is a speaker encoder that captures global characteristics because we have used temporal average pooling and we represent uh, the speaker and the global characteristics in a separate VQ codebook space. And then the wave RNN is conditioned with these global features. This approach is also self-supervised. It learns the content subphones. It learns speaker representations as well. However, we found that the speaker VQ codebook is unstable and it does not always produce quality output. In this case, we have added a speaker classifier to the speaker encoder space and this helps guide the type of information that the speaker encoder learns. And every other component has remained the same. So again, we have a phone encoder and a speaker encoder, and our decoder is a wave RNN vocoder using global and local conditioning. So this approach is semi-supervised. 
It learns the content subphones. It also learns a speaker representation space. It uses the additional speaker classifier. However, we are worried that it does not necessarily disentangle the speaker identity from the phones. Here we have the VQVAE with an adversarial loss. And the result is something toward disentangled representations of phone and speaker. This approach is again semi-supervised. We learn the content subphones. We also learn speaker representations. We have the additional speaker classifier for the speaker encoder. And we've also introduced the gradient reversal with the speaker classifier to have an adversarial loss on the phone encoder. And this leads to a speaker phone disentanglement. And once again, we use the wave RN vocoder with the local conditions being the subphone BQ codes and the global conditioning being the global temporal average pooling speaker representation from the speaker VQ codes. So next, we'll talk about the evaluation. To evaluate the synthesized speech coming from each variant of the VQVAE that I just discussed, we use automatic assessment. Traditionally, listening tests are used. However, in this case, we've done the assessment of synthesis quality in a fully automatic way. We did the estimated mean opinion score. We also calculated speaker similarity, and we did a, a, an intelligibility uh, with word error rate based on ASR. We used four testing conditions. Condition one was seen speakers and seen texts. We consider this the easiest uh, condition because this information was seen during training. Condition two has seen speakers and unseen text. Condition three has unseen speakers and seen text. And finally, condition four, the more difficult, has both unseen speakers and unseen texts. We trained on the VCTK English studio quality data with 110 speakers and use a 16 kilohertz sample rate Note that there is some overlapping text content among the speakers in VCTK. And you can visit this URL to listen to some audio samples. We find that the adversarial loss with softmax, it performs the best in terms of the estimated mean opinion score, the speaker similarity, as well as the automatic ASR-based intelligibility. Next, we performed a speaker diarization task. We did this in order to evaluate how well our speaker representations are capturing speaker information. To do this, we uh, formed a data set uh, that is like diarization, where we have concatenated the audio so that we use the VCTK audio uh, but we have concatenated, for example, uh, information from speaker one with another utterance from a different speaker to simulate a diarization rhization. So this is concatenated audio. And we always had two speakers and three turns. And we use a two second sliding window when we applied this. We had, of course, a baseline. And then we used our VQ method. The baseline was based on the Die Hard 2019 Track 1 X Vector approach, and that is a PLDA agglomerative clustering, and it was trained on LDC development data. For our methods, using the VQ, we first obtain codes, the speaker codes, from single speaker audio, and then we looked up the codes for our simulated diarization task using the single speaker reference. And that's how we were able to determine that portions in a two second sliding window belong to, for example, speaker 113 versus speaker 193. And then we note that the change in code corresponds to a change in uh, the speaker diarization We found that our adversarial loss with softmax version of the VQVAE performed the best 
and it also performed better than the strong X-Vector baseline on average. It was significantly better than our self-supervised global VQ uh, method. And we also note that our global VQ uh, method did not learn a diverse speaker space. We also did a uh, evaluation based on phone recognition. So for this, we compared again to a strong audio baseline using traditional audio features. We did this using Timit data and we used the ESPNet called a CMU A and 4 recipe to perform this task. That is an LSTM encoder decoder model. They contain 64 units and we trained to 100 epics using CTC loss without attention and a decoder beam size of 20. We found that uh, adding the speaker component to the VQVAE does not sacrifice phone quality from the original VQVAE and that our speaker label Angular Softmax performed better than our self-supervised global VQ. And another important thing to note is that our VQVAE system variants make similar proportion of types of errors. So for example, the error type for substitution is relatively high compared to the error type for deletion. So next I'll talk about the conclusion and the future work. So the findings from these experiments was that adding an additional BQ codebook does not degrade performance. The speaker codes that we've added are meaningful in the diarizationization rotation task. The speaker VQ codebook helps the system generalize to unseen conditions, which before was not possible with the original VQ VAE. The semi-supervised with adversarial loss is the best system variant. And we also note that none of the system variants utilize the full phone or speaker codebook space. Some of the ongoing and future work for my dissertation is to now incorporate a triple encoder system that uses an encoder and VQ space for F0 along with speaker and phones. Uh, we're also looking at learning multilingual speech synthesis for French, German, Italian, and English. And we're learning VQ subphone space for code switching speech, where the language changes mid utterance. We're also building and testing voice conversion using learned uh, speaker dictionary. And finally, we're learning how to use the VQ codes for text to speech synthesis. And one of the questions that we hope to put to the community is that it is not yet known if certain types of information should remain entangled or not. So for example, should the definition of speaker identity include gender, age, and accent? Thank you for coming to this talk. Please feel free to stop by our poster for a lively discussion.